right, so our coverage of CES is brought to you by Corsair and the Corsair One i40, i60, and Corsair One Pro i80, which is this guy right here. This is my first time getting hands-on with it, and I'm, I, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed first and foremost. We've, we've seen this, this change where brands go, or even buyers go from wanting a big case, and then people want small cases, and they want big cases again, and then they want small cases again. And what we tend to find is as, as performance really starts to you know, get packed in smaller packages, as performance really starts to scale up, you find that the size of it also tends to scale down, making small form factor stuff very possible. Now this is the i80, which is the, the Corsair One Pro. This is an X299. It's got an ASRock Mini ITX motherboard in there using quad channel so dim memory. It's also all crammed into approximately a 12 liter chassis. It uses what they're calling convection assisted cooling. And let me go ahead and show you what that means real quick. So on the top right here, you've got this fan that's got this metal, and this is metal, got this metal sort of a grill on here. And the fan is an exhaust fan, so it's pulling heat up because heat naturally rises, right? So it, it's a weak force, but it's a force nonetheless that exists. Now on the side, you'll find that you have these perforations. There's one here and one here. And these sides can open up. If I can do this without breaking it. And as you can see, we have this little bitty baby, kind of an AIO cooler in there. And then we've got one over here too. And this one's for the GPU. Now these are not conventional sizes. This is not a 240 and this is a 120. This is proprietary specifically to this chassis. You can see how they have the fittings coming off the side. They do rotate. But as you can see, this is not a standard 120 or 140. It's also pretty slim. If I had to guess, it's about 25 millimeters, about the thinness of a fan. But there's no fans on it, as you can see. If we in fact rotate this this way, you can see the motherboard with the so dim slots. This particular one has a 1920X in it. So that is a 12 core extreme processor that is also running uh, you know, the water cooler on it, very similar HIO cooler to you might find like the H100 Pro or 150i Pro. And on the GPU side of things, this is also running a 2080 Ti with another fairly proprietary cooler on it. So again, the same type of AIO pump, but it also has a heat sink and a fan blowing down directly on the power delivery. Now that's what makes one of the questions that I had um, sort of answered before I could actually ask it. Dimitri had actually asked at the keynote that we were at, couldn't you just make this a bare bones system if people wanted to, to use this or build it up themselves? And the problem is with the way everything is very uh, meticulously thought out in terms of wire routing, the wires that are pre-installed, because the GPU solution is not, um, it, it's not universal. You could put an air cooler in here technically, but then you're, you really are gonna be choking it off, even though it has this perforation right here. They did say they tested it, in fact, the first Corsair One version of this last year did offer an air-cooled solution, but even with the blower-style cooler, it just was not optimal and it was having some less than desirable thermal performance. So these blocks and the cooler and the VRM and all that is pretty specific to the graphics card. So if you had to get it with the graphics card already in it, and exactly this motherboard, those are two components you don't have control over, which takes away the whole idea of a bare bones. Typically bare bones is chassis, power supply, and uh, maybe a couple of other features in there and that's it. You have to build out the rest of it. So because you would have to go with this cooling solution and this graphics card and this motherboard and this power supply, then you technically are not bare bones at that point. But you'll notice I said there's no fans on this because once you close it up and you've got this large fan on the top and it is held together by screws, which we don't have here. So I'm having to kind of like, there, there we go. So we are gonna be doing some videos on this. We are gonna be doing a review of it. Um, we initially passed it the review last year because I was kinda of like, eh, you know, it's another pre-built system, yada, yada, yada. But I think that there's a lot of unique, nifty features in this that warrant at least a teardown, um, upgradability, all that sort of stuff. Interestingly, it's using SODIM memory. Um, SODIM is laptop memory, if you're not aware. It's just, that's the format of it. And you can get some pretty fast SODIM. The problem is fast, so dim, those two words together usually have a pretty premium cost to it versus like regular, you know, DDR5 or DDR4 sticks. So yeah, DDR5 and a PC would be nice, but I digress. So getting DDR4 um, so dim that's fast, let's say like 4,800 megahertz or something like that, you're gonna pay for it. So it does come at a premium. This particular model retails for $4,999. So it definitely has a sting, but uh, this, amount of, this amount of performance packed into 12 liters, um, yeah, I, someone out there wants this, I'm sure, which is why it exists. So you'll, you can see that on our channel later on. But guys, 
Thanks for uh, taking a look at this video of the Corsair One Pro semi teardown. I mean, Steve and Kyle aren't the only people that can tear things down in Linus or whatever. Well, Kyle technically built something up, not a tear down. We sort of tore it down, but not really. Whatever. Yeah, I'm losing my train of thought, it doesn't matter. So guys, anyway, thanks for watching. Again, a huge thank you to Corsair for sending us out here. And uh, as always, we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes.